Hello, everyone, and welcome to this very special edition of the annual Southern California High School Ceramics Exhibition for 2020. My name is Beth Ann Gerstein, the Executive Director of AMOCA, and like many of you, I'm social distancing and coming to you from my home in Southern California while the museum is closed. Joining me today to celebrate the next generation of ceramic talent are two of my colleagues, Ashley Rowley and Nathan Stanfield. Hi everybody, my name is Ashley Rowley and I'm the Education and Membership Manager here at AMOCA. I just wanted to take this opportunity while we're here and while you see me uh, to invite you to support our high school exhibition and programs like this by becoming a member at AMOCA. You can sign up for a membership on our website uh, and check out some of our other virtual exhibitions while you're there. I would also love to take this opportunity and take a moment to invite all of the students in this exhibition for, to apply for AMOCA's Teen Council for the 2020 through 2021 school year. I'm really impressed with all of the work and the applicants that we've seen in our high school exhibition, and I would really love the opportunity to work with you personally in this coming year and be part of your growth artistically and professionally. Applications are available online and they will be linked on the high school page on the high school exhibition page. Hi, um, my name is Nathan Stanfield and I'm the Exhibitions Manager at AMOCA. Uh, I coordinate and install all the exhibitions, both physical and digital. Uh, I'd like to take a moment, to, if you haven't already, to invite you to check out our new, currently virtual only exhibition, Making in Between Contemporary Chinese American Ceramics in digital form on our website at amoca.org. Thank you, Ashley and Nathan. Great to have you guys here today. It's been a joy to put this exhibition together with you. With the arrival of the coronavirus, AMOCA had to close to the public on March 15th, which meant we couldn't install the SoCal High School exhibition at the museum. Instead of canceling the exhibition, we wanted to find a way to share all the wonderful artwork with you and were able to create a digital exhibition. I would like to thank Paul Roach, AMOCA's Director of Advancement and Communications, for his help pivoting this exhibition to a digital platform. Thanks, Paul. Um, I would also like to thank the Ruth and Joseph Reed Foundation for the Arts. We're grateful for their support of this exhibition as well as AMOCA's education and outreach programs. The Reed Foundation strives to provide access to arts education and experiences inside and outside of school for high school age and younger students through funding for educational initiatives and arts experiences. We are also incredibly grateful to the Dew Foundation for their support of the high school exhibition, as well as general operations support of AMOCA. The Dew Foundation helps charitable organizations meet pressing needs, fulfill vital missions, and promotes the common good worldwide. AMOCA is young, like many of you here today. AMOCA opened in 2003, founded and guided by the vision of Julianne and David Armstrong, patrons of the arts who believe, as we do, that clay is central to the human experience. Your presence here virtually, how weird is that? Still getting used to it, and frankly, I hope we get back to normal soon. Your presence is a testament to the success of that vision, and it's my joy to honor so many young ceramic artists in this exhibition. I wanna thank all of the students who submitted their work for consideration for this exhibition. Thank you also, and especially to the teachers, who I know have been working incredibly hard to adjust to the new virtual reality of teaching online. If there's anything we can do to support you, please let us know. You are a vital pillar of the ceramic arts in our community. Before we head into the awards, I wanna share a little bit about it myself. The high school exhibition is especially near and dear to my heart. In 1923, well before I was born, the Alliance of Young Artists and Writers organized their first exhibition and awards program. The Alliance understood that there are awards for high school students who excel academically, in sports, but rarely in the arts. 40 years ago, I participated in one of their exhibitions on the East Coast with my high school artwork and even won an award. And it was incredibly meaningful to me, even now. I believe that even if you do not choose a career in the arts, being a creative thinker and a creative, pro creative problem solver will have a wonderful impact on your future. The artwork you will see online was selected as part of a rigorous jurying process. The five jurors were Mark Walsh, a board member of the Dew Foundation, Vicki Connolly, Grants Administrator at the Reed Foundation, 
and AMOCA staff members, Nathan, Ashley, and myself. We received 279 applications, which was a 44% increase from last year's exhibition. There were over 27 different schools and homeschool programs represented this year, which represented a 30% increase from last year. So competition was incredibly strong. Nathan? Thank you, Beth. The jurors narrowed down the selection to 75 artworks. From this group, awards were selected in three categories. We combined 9th and 10th grade awards, 11th grade awards, and 12th grade awards. Artworks were reviewed on the merit of technique, design, form, and color. They were also reviewed based on their creativity, concept, and or narrative. One best in show and several honorable mentions will be recognized in each of the three categories. In addition, the artists awarded best in show will receive a cash award and a one-year membership to AMOCA at the family level in recognition of their achievements. Ashley? Thanks, Nathan. As we announce the pieces recognized for distinction, we'll talk a little bit about some of the aspects jurors recognized in their decisions. We encourage your comments and questions in the feed. Beth? Thank you, Ashley. On to the awards, frankly, my favorite part. Starting with the ninth and 10th grade awards, the first honorable mention is for, drum roll please, Perry by Sandra Duong from the San Gabriel High School. Yay! Sandra's piece exhibits a playfulness that could often be lost in art. The artist's creativity and use of color to create a feeling that the viewer is looking into a whole nother world was something that really took me. Yeah, I totally agree, Nathan. I was really impressed with the level of detail that was displayed in Sandra's piece. It's really such a fun piece and like the bright colors were really interestingly contrasting sort of the passing of time that can be seen through the rust and wear that she created in her work. Our next ninth and 10th grade honorable mention award is Tea Set by Dylan Mealy from the Flint Ridge Preparatory School. There are so many steps that go into making a tea set, all of which require a certain level of precision and pre-planning. This piece reflects the artist's skill in both wheel throwing, attention to proportion, eye color, and appreciation for function. As a maker, you almost need to put yourself in the mind of the user before you even start touching the clay. Ashley. Yeah, I was really impressed with that level of precision that you were talking about um, that went into the making of this piece. When making a tea set, there is so much that can go awry. Dylan's work is elegant in form and his choice of white really allows the tea, uh, the tea set's elegant form to be seen without distraction. Yeah, really. And congratulations. Our next ninth and 10th grade award is an honorable mention for Hair by Camille Marie Pye from the Flintridge Prep School. This work is an incredible example of the style called trompe l'oeil, which translates directly to fool the eye. Uh, at first glance, you wouldn't believe this piece is made of clay. The artist has a keen eye for detail, both in proportion and color, and the softness and glazing and shading is what really put this over the top for me. Yeah, I agree with you, Nathan. The choice of color for this pair, I think, was what was so well done. And mm -hmm. Camille's texture and the angle at which the pair rests, I think, makes it feel truly organic. Yeah. And now, the best in show for ninth and 10th grades. I am pleased to announce Pangolin by Ian Mead from El Toro High School. Congrats, Ian. <clears throat> Recreating anything in clay takes a high attention to detail and understanding the material being used. This work, Pangolin, demonstrates the artist's understanding in ceramic materials. I was first struck by the detailed glazing on each individual scale and the shading around the animal's face. I was amazed by the artist's sculpting ability toward the detail of each individual scale. It's truly amazing. It is really good. Congratulations, Ian. That's a, really an achievement. The shading of this piece uh, is really what made it stand out for me. I love how Ian supported his three-dimensional work and the detail that was put into each scale by creating that depth in his shadows. The blending on each scale is fabulous and it really does help to emphasize his skill in sculpture. Mm -hmm. And now we move on to the awards for students in the 11th grade. The first honorable mention is for Abstract Figure by Abby Christopher from LaSalle High School. Using the human form to convey emotion or a feeling has been a device used in sculpture since forever. 
This work, abstract figure, appears to convey hope during a state of feeling fragmented or disoriented. I enjoy work that asks more of the viewer and at the same time feels relatable without forcing its message on me. I agree, Nathan. Creating figurative work, especially representing a human face with realistic proportion, is really an impressive feat. I appreciate the movement that Abby creates in this piece in her positive and negative space, and I really love the impact of her bold color choice. The second honorable mention for 11th grade is for Tally All the Things That You Broke by Nick Blumberg and Rachel Marrero from El Dorado High School. What really caught my eye about this work was the composition, proportion, and use of line, which reminds me of kind of like a sunset over the Pacific Ocean. The form of the throne vessel is complemented stunningly with slivers of color, and the hard lines almost seem to disappear and blur together towards the top of the base. Yeah, this piece is really impressive to me because the surface decoration on this piece just supports the form so well. I really appreciate the sharp separation of color and the brightness of that color contrasted with the dark reflective silver at the bottom of the work. The last honorable mention for 11th grade is for Image by Joey Farias from the California School of the Arts. The Greeks viewed mastery of the human form as one of the highest accomplishments of a sculptor. Image is a fantastic technical accomplishment in this regard, yet the meaning behind the work seems to have a deeper context. Taking an old tradition and recontextualizing it in the present as a means to express self-identity is really what set this work apart for me. Yeah, I really do love the way that this work references the mar marble sculptures that we know so well from the Greeks who were striving for the human ideal. And I love the way that the artist Joey kind of used their title, Image, uh, to inform the way that we perceive this piece as sort of questioning that ideal. And now the best of show for the 11th grade is Untitled by Lucas Pierce from Flint Ridge Prep School. Congrats, Lucas Pierce. An ode to ancient pottery forms, Lucas Pierce's Untitled combines multiple construction methods and decoration techniques to create a work that is both interesting in form as in imagery. Upon closer inspection, you'll notice a story being told through the images and symbolism through the gold leafing and the icons. Yeah, congratulations, Lucas. Your piece absolutely blew me away. The mastery of technique and attention to detail in this piece is extremely impressive. I love the way that you mirrored the shape of the cube and the body of this work and the handle. And the skill in creating a tubed handle in that sort of square shape is absolutely mind boggling. Great job. And now on to the awards for students in the 12th grade. The first honorable mention is Machine One and Two by Steve Sion Cho from Crescenta Valley High School. This set of works are particular in that they appear to have a function, as the name suggests, yet it's not obvious what that function is. It invites the viewer to deconstruct the nature of the machine to try and discover its use. Machine One and Two are technical accomplishments with excellent line, proportion, and construction techniques. Yeah, I was extremely impressed with the artist's display of technical ability. I also love that the artist allowed the form to speak for itself, using minimal surface alteration and letting the raw clay speak for itself. Mm -hmm. The second honorable mention for 12th grade is Geometric Plates by Milla Durfee from Flint Ridge Prep School. Geometric abstraction and ceramic art has been around for centuries. From the membrace pottery of the American Southwest to the large geometric works by American artist John Mason, incorporating any amount of mathematical design in ceramic art requires forethought and planning before even touching the clay and an incredible attention to detail. Yeah, what impressed me most about the geometric designs in the set was how clean and straight all of the lines are. You see absolutely no bleed from the different colors present in the set. I also really enjoyed seeing the continuation of Stylistic Idea. This artist was actually present in our exhibition from last year, in the 2019 SoCal High School exhibition. And so it's really cool to see sort of that continuation of the Stylistic Idea and sort of her improvement that's obviously present in this set. Mm -hmm. The third honorable mention for 12th grade is Grasping for Attention by Monica Meza from Tustin High School. 
Artists often use as a storytelling device, a narrative to convey the artist's ideas and feelings. In grasping for attention, you get a sense of the artist's voice as they address issues of self-image in the age of social media. Mm -hmm. I love the use of very recognizable objects sort of set in very different arrangements than we're used to seeing to tell a story. I also thought that the use of public figures' images arranged on a social media platform was a really interesting way to kind of further that message. Overall, what impressed me about this piece was the strong voice that it speaks through all parts of the work. Mm -hmm. The final honorable mention for 12th grade is Tea Set by Noelle Tamora from Kent Ridge Prep School. The tea set is a sort of standard in the ceramics field involving many different constructed parts, all refined to perfect the functionality. Making a tea set is a challenge and making a modular tea set requires another level of precision. The artist's inventive inclusion of a strainer, while the whole set is also modular and its ability to stack together, really set this piece above the bar for me. Mm -hmm. Making a tea set is challenging and creating separate pieces that work together so well is extremely impressive to me. Uh, what took it to the next level was not only sort of the parts that all stacked together so well, but that the surface decoration was so cohesive through these different parts, and it felt like a continuation of the same decoration. It really helps to kind of unify this piece. Mm -hmm. And finally, the best in show for 12th grade is Muffler Set by Hector Batista from Valencia High School. Congrats, Hector. This set of drinking vessels falls into a tradition of trompoy, meaning again to pull the eye. The drinking vessels imitate steel surfaces that have been riveted together, and highlights the artist's attention to detail. There's a long history of trompoy in the ceramic art, such as work from artists Richard Shaw and Sylvia Hyman, both featured in our current exhibition, new acquisitions from the Julianne and David Armstrong collection. Yeah, congratulations, Hector. This really is a fantastic achievement. I love the whimsy of this set. The way that you've taken something completely functional and transformed it into something that is functional and sculptural is really exciting to me. I also love the attention to detail and the weathering that we can see the application of lasers. I think it really adds to the story of these objects. Thank you again, Nathan and Ashley, for your comments and congratulations again to all of our award winners and all of the students who participated in this exhibition. It is our belief here at AMOCA that clay is central to the human experience. This is the first time we've done something like this digitally and we had a blast and hope you did too. Thank you for joining us to celebrate the accomplishments of the next vanguard of Southern California's emerging ceramic talents. If you enjoyed this exhibition as much as we did, consider becoming a member. We need your support now more than ever. Membership information and a link to the online exhibition can be found at amoca.org. Thank you from all of us, and we hope to see you at the museum soon. Thank you. Yay, <laughs>